our next speaker is Associate Professor of New Media Department in Juan Franco National University of Lviv. So let me introduce you, Yuri Zelizniak. Okay, uh, let me start my presentation in uh, English. Oh, you see everything I hope? Everything on the screen? Yeah? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. So, so uh, the title is New Journalism Professional Standards or Standard Profession Under Modern Threats and Challenges. Uh, and I would like to start uh, with the few things, just letting you know that when I'm trying to deliver uh, the presentation about new journalism, it's not that kind of new journalism that associated with Truman Capote or Tom Wolf. It was a different type of new journalism. It was uh, fiction actually integrated into journalism reporting. And I'm gonna uh, speak about something different. We know a lot and we speak already today about uh, journalism standards. Uh, for decades, uh, BBC editorial guidelines were probably the Bible for journalists in terms of standards of reporting, uh, or in terms of um, making use on the appropriate level of proficiency and so on and so on. Actually, as far as I remember, even editorial guidelines of uh, fifth channel in Ukraine and some other media uh, in early 2000, they were just basically copied from the BBC uh, on the editorial guidelines. It was almost the same text, uh, just translated and adopted for the Ukrainian reality. So we knew already a lot about accuracy, impartiality, uh, and different other stuff. But let me talk about the crisis of the professional standards that we are feeling right now. And even some people uh, among the um, officials of the British Broadcasting Corporation tend to uh, note that some of the editorial standards, editorial guidelines have to be revised. And that was actually not the recent discussion. It was the discussion started almost a decade uh, ago. So after uh, the um, Russian aggression ag against the civilized world, I would rather uh, use this term, uh, fake news, um, hybrid uh, warfare, the questions of truth uh, and or even truthfulness uh, were raised. In terms of journalism standard, uh, by now it, there was no problem. We have to cover the point of view of different or both sides of the conflict. Sometimes it will look like that. So media professionals are trying to uh, ask some questions and broadcast the answer of the newsmaker, such a newsmaker as this sitting uh, in front of Abraham Lincoln. But to my mind, uh, this year, there was a significant change in this paradigm. I mean, when American journalists, uh, guided by professional standards for years and years, suddenly interrupted the press conference of the first person in the state, I mean the President of the United States, still the current President of the United States, Donald Trump, and they actually said that 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 was delivered by the President actually is not true. This is the different type of information or even disinformation from the first person in the state. And that actually the breakdown or the point break uh, of the paradigm. Maybe some of you know um, this movie, Wag the Dog. Uh, it's pretty old movie um, with the uh, Hollywood stars involved. And the story was about a hoax uh, before the um, president, uh, the, the second term of the president when the president of the United States was trying to re-elect himself here yeah, for the second term. And there was also uh, the war case, uh, the war with Albania, and actually it was shot uh, in Hollywood 
uh, in ordinary studios and just produced as a show. Uh, or even maybe uh, it was like a um, product of, for mass market with music, with uh, uh, some um, merchandise and so on and so on. Uh, and actually, uh, I was trying to uh, note that a uh, couple of years ago, four years ago, we had probably the same story in Ukraine with Nadia Savchenko. She was like a hero for the whole nation, covered in an appropriate way with um, national TV, national radio stations, and uh, mainstream uh, other mainstream media. And everything was uh, done due to that principles uh, that were described in that movie, where everything was actually like a hoax. It was a mystification. And now we know uh, more, at least, maybe not everything, but more about a person uh, involved in the, that story as the main hero. So that looked like that, I mean, when it was covered uh, here in Ukraine. So I'm just trying to draw some parallel, parallels in here. Um, if we talk about fakes, I uh, wrote an article uh, with that title uh, two years ago uh, for Detector Media. We must admit that uh, definitely not just ordinary people uh, are targeted by the fake newsmakers or newsmakers of fake news, uh, but journalists suffer a lot. And it's not the term um, just of professionalism here in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, ordinary people, but uh, we see that due to um, different uh, expectations or even uh, different studies, people tend to use or tend to uh, consume free news uh, and they like, they prefer not to pay. Uh, we were talking about that issue yesterday, especially uh, after Professor Spuchatinnik uh, presentation. And here's the uh, study about uh, four different countries, how these countries tend to consume information uh, through Facebook. I mean, free information, they, they are paying for that information only uh, with their uh, time, and that's it. And just uh, let me point out that basically these four countries uh, were um, targeted by, by that uh, study, maybe or partially because of uh, such is issues like uh, the election of the, uh, Donald Trump as the president of the United States, Brexit, uh, some um, political issues connected to Germany, and some political issues uh, connected to um, uh, Brazil, where uh, President Bolsonaro uh, sometimes is also compared to uh, President Trump in his uh, activity or even media activity. Uh, so, uh, different audience prefer to use different free channels for information. Uh, this uh, uh, study was uh, also targeted at uh, uh, WhatsApp and, and Facebook, and basically uh, the result was uh, like that Facebook is a little bit more risky than WhatsApp, I prefer to trust uh, WhatsApp and my connections in that media. Uh, but all these people uh, were also asked about uh, how they understand fake news. What is actually fake news? Uh, and the majority of people uh, tend to answer that it's definitely not satire parody and it's definitely not the type of news that Donald Trump tends to name uh, fake news. It's poor journalism, it's propaganda and PR spin, fabrication and malicious news, as in clickbait. And that's the way uh, we uh, tend to know um, American, actual American president version of what is 
uh, fake news in his uh, war against uh, CNN, Washington Post, uh, Huffington Post, um, uh, partially uh, Wall Street Journal because it's more uh, uh, right uh, media, but also New York Times and other. But some of these uh, media are also providing poor content, but they are respected in the same time. For instance, we may see here the map of Ukraine provided by uh, the New York Times without Crimea, for instance. Or uh, let me show you this map with Kramatorsk in here and Slavyansk somewhere in the northern part of Crimea and it's provided by CNN. So, of course, it's not just a fake news. It's, it's a poor journalism, but come on, it works for a different audience, and sometimes people are able to use this information, use that result of poor journalism in their own interests. Of course, on the national level or even on the regional level in Ukraine, we also have uh, cases with uh, definitely poor journalism, like uh, this fake news about um, Russia Sraka uh, as an ambassador uh, of Slovenia in Russia. It was made up by Panorama Pop, Russian uh, and here it's mentioned that this is fake news site. They were sincere, but they are just uh, producing some fakes. But for Ukrainian media, like Champion, uh, it's uh, the Department of Ukrainska Pravda, or a local media in the Vysoky Zamok, that was enough to publish a real serious news about Russia Sraka, because it, it was emotional. But uh, we talked about fake news yesterday enough. With deep fakes, the situation is going to be just worse and worse because not only textual fakes are available, but multimedia, more uh, complex, uh, more complex um, uh, messages are also made up and brought up for the audience using voice, using images, and so on. I would like also to compare the approach uh, in communication of uh, American president administration and Ukrainian president administration uh, in uh, 2019 uh, and 2020. So actually 2019, it was a year of Ukraine in uh, the United States because of uh, Hunter Biden case, Burisma group, uh, and all the stuff connected to some legal issues uh, Rudy Giuliani was uh, a guest uh, of uh, different Ukrainian mainstream media and Ukrainian, uh, some officials or even former officials were discussed in different uh, programs on the mainstream media on different channels uh, in the US. And it looks as if we have some kind of similarity uh, in actions here because it was definitely not only uh, the case of perfect talks or fantastic phone calls, as we know the lexicon of uh, American president. In Ukraine, in 2019, um, the uh, actual uh, political elite proclaimed uh, their own way of communication, direct communication, basically without journalists, without media, direct talk to the audience especially after uh, the uh, very successful uh, election campaign uh, in 2019. So we do not need journalists. Uh, actually, it was said by th this man, former head of uh, the president's office. We know already his uh, famous more than three hour interview, I believe about uh, his point of views. But that's the history. That's the actual history of new way of communication of uh, Ukrainian ruling uh, elite. And I, I just love these images because they are obviously very expressive, you know. 
and uh, other politicians, for instance, uh, Foreign Minister uh, of Culture, uh, they were trying to find a new way or even a new legislation uh, for Ukrainian media uh, to work. And current uh, Minister of um, Culture was also targeted at a uh, different type of media as a manager of one plus one holding it's obvious why he is uh, interested in these cases like that and also it was like a, a play so we are giving something to journalists we are taking something from them we are just trying to find the new way we are probing people we are probing the society uh how we are going to deal with them how we are going to define what is uh, truth what is standard of uh, news and so on and so on and that was actually the indicator that something is wrong with the standard as it is uh, the uh, journalists union were also worried about that and they were trying to uh, find some obvious uh, answers for that situation but it looks as if the paradigm was changed once again and media uh, in Ukraine are um, not, not back on the same place as it was uh, till 2019, but something is different. And at the same time, we have uh, an interesting situation with international uh, media organizations like Reporters Without Borders, where they are trying to show very weird approach to um, standardization of uh, media work. For instance, let me show you Ukraine in the delivery, Ukrainian uh, map in here with Crimea and Russian map in here with Crimea too. So for different audience, we have different messages just to please them all. Uh, I would like just to uh, point out, uh, these are just preliminary uh, thoughts that it was media who made Donald Trump the president in 2016. He started a war against media and he lost finally this year in, 2000, in 2020. Uh, the same was uh, the same story, the, probably the same story with uh, Volodymyr Zelensky uh, a year ago in Ukraine. But now people are trying to just uh, act in a different way. The, ultimate question here is who is your primary client in terms of politicians in terms of media you have to find the better way to uh, interact with your client and provide information due to maybe new standard and i propose to use uh, this term in, in, in interpretative sufficiency uh, it's the term of clifford christians the professor of journalism especially he's uh, targeted at uh, journalism ethics uh, he's from um, university uh, of uh, illinois in urbana champaign and actually he was my host professor during uh, my free break um, grant and i spent a year with him talking with him and uh, now writing some uh, pieces uh, for different media so we have to know our audience as best as possible we have to provide truthful information and provide our explanation why we think this information is truthful enough for this audience and provide some proofs, of course. Uh, audiences in um, Ukraine and in the United States tend to be different but similar sometimes. Uh, I would like to remind this polls, uh, I mean just street polls or box pops, uh, in uh, the United States, when people were asked about the difference, what they what people are pr prefer most, uh, Obamacare or Affordable Care Act, it's all about uh, the uh, medical care, and the majority of people tend to answer that they prefer Affordable Care Act, as the as if it, it's the different document, but actually it was one document, Obamacare and affordable, but two names for the same document. And that's the level of uh, 
common people when it comes to the identification of some complex questions. In Ukraine, uh, far before the conflict uh, in Crimea, in Eastern Ukraine, there was a different poll when people uh, in Crimea were asked what, what they prefer to, uh, for Ukraine, to join NATO or North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And the majority of people answered, let it be North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So the same level of uh, people of, of audience. That's the graph of um, social media consumption uh, in Ukraine uh, between 2012 and 2019. You may see that the majority uh, of people uh, in the beginning were uh, in uh, Russian social media um, contact. Uh, in a couple of years, uh, we see the difference in 2016 uh, Facebook and that's the difference when uh, Russian social media were banned. And Facebook is number one, now Instagram is number two. Of course, now, nowadays we have TikTok and, and so on, uh, but contact is back. And actually, social media, it's also um, the sphere where the war for people's uh, hearts and minds is on. And it never stops, as Vlad said already. Uh, some media professionals and scholars were asked uh, a year ago, what will the internet look like in 10 years, in uh, 2030? And they tend to see the uh, possibilities of not so perfect future, because the majority of media are going online, if uh, not all of them are on online already. But it looks as if we are going to have something like a new tribal society. The uh, corona crisis, political crisis, war crisis, and other crises, they are dividing the society, dividing people, dividing the humanity, and they're dividing internet with, not only with filtered bubbles, but with the way people think, with the way people uh, understand the world, into some kind of a tribes, even digital tribes. In, it's not the question of method, how, how people are, divi are divided online, offline, by uh, media, without uh, mainstream media, and so on. The, the actual problem is the division of people, that they are divided. And the ultimate question is, uh, in whose interests? Who, who has to be blamed for that? Only the actors, only uh, the, the client, the particular clients of the society, weak enough to let other divide him in appropriate, in, in not appropriate way. Uh, we must uh, understand that internet techno as a technology uh, is evolving. Uh, we knew already about uh, web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. We are actually right now probably living in a uh, 3.0 time, but just look at this graph. Communication is between business and entertainment, between money and emotions, actually, profit and emotions, profit and beliefs. And that's the place of the mediator, actually place of uh, our profession, I mean, of journalists, as a mediator. Uh, the idea of Saving uh, journalism uh, is great, especially after uh, these uh, books uh, or even these texts of Dan Gilmer uh, and uh, Jay Rosen. People formerly known as audience are now ruling the world using social media. They have uh, their own small boats and they are, the in, uh, they are independent from the book. Uh, technical and um, media companies. But at the same time, I would like to point out that sometimes we are dealing with something like information Darwinism. So not all information is able to survive. Not all people are able to informationally survive if they are not prepared enough in terms of consumption, in terms of understanding, in terms of acting due to their worldview. And if we talk about the standard, it's something like preparing 
uh, a great dish uh, for your audience, but using the part, the very essential part of your audience. Maybe you remember that that movie, an audience sometimes will be pleased enough with the dish made with its own part. So I would propose uh, these um, conclusions, especially for uh, our translator. Uh, so it's a matter of such crucial uh, things like trust, thinking, not just critical thinking, as I mentioned yesterday, truthful information, because there's a difference between truth and truthful information or truthfulness and time. These are the most critical points uh, that we have to use sometimes in terms of coming with a new journalism standard just to make sure that journalism will not remain just a standard profession for earning money, killing time, and fooling people. I'm grateful for your time and patience, and I'm ready to answer your questions. It's three past noon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Your presentation was very interesting. I made some notes. And uh, if you don't mind, can I ask you to send this one to our members, participants, just to use it later? No problem with that. Thank you. So is there any questions? But, um... We are running out of time, I believe. People are tired already. They oh, everything, <laughs> everything, everything was, was idly clear and no questions at all. <laughs>